Hi everyone and welcome to OpenMRS University. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can use the UI framework module in your module to build user interfaces faster and better. Um, as you can see from this little graphic here, as a contrived example, I'm going to be building a social network functionality module for OpenMRS. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to try to show not just usage of the UI framework module, but also some general best practices for OpenMRS development these days. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the Maven module wizard archetype to create the structure of the wizard uh, of the module that I want to that I'm going to build. So I'm running this from the directory where I want the module to be created, uh, MVN module wizard colon generate and you can find out about this on the wiki. So I will go with the default group ID of org.openmrs.module. I'm going to call this the social module. Um, social networking. Well I'm just going to call it social actually as the module name. Um, Open MRS University example um, showing the UI framework. I'm going to say we depend on the most recent version of Open MRS. Um, I don't need an admin page yet, and I will take a service layer. Um, which I'll call social service, and um, this is going to create a social object, which I don't actually really want, but let's say I'll have a social status class. Um, let's say I also would like to depend on the UI framework module, version 2.0, and also the UI library module, version 2.0. And that's all. <clears throat> so at this point, um, we have created the basic structure for that module. And I'm going to um, also, uh, this is called social right now. I'm going to rename that to OpenMRS. Uh, sorry, so I'm going to rename social to OpenMRS module social. And I'm going to do git init here so that I can also uh, push this up to my uh, GitHub repository. Um, now that I've done that, um, now that I've done this git init, I'm going to switch over to my IDE. Um, I'm using IntelliJ here. Um, I've been using that recently as opposed to Eclipse, but obviously Eclipse would work just as well. So I'm going to include, or I'm going to import a new module. In Eclipse, I would say import existing, file import existing Maven modules. In IntelliJ, I go uh, just add a new module, um, import module from external model, Maven. I choose... Um, the folder I just created, OpenMRS module social. Tell IntelliJ that I wanted to recognize um, spring, spring files. All right, so now I've got a, um, I've got my API and OMOD projects. Um, if I look at pom.xml, um, you'll see I don't want to add the um, IntelliJ module files to, to Git. Um, you can see here that we're relying on OpenMRS version 191. We have dependencies on the UI framework and UI library modules. There's actually a bug in the Maven module archetype um, that fails to put scope scope um, provided 
in both of these places. So I'm going to put that in myself. And voila, so now I've got um, the skeleton of a module set up more or less the way I want it. So now, before I get to the user interface at all, I'm going to start off with some behavior-driven development practices to describe the API that I want to support that user interface. So I'm going to open up social service, um, which was created automatically by the archetype. And I'm actually going to do, I'm going to create a test class for this. Um, which I don't actually want to be context sensitive, so I'm going to remove that. And basically, what I'm going to want to do is say, first off, I'm going to need an uh, auto wired, so that's not right. I'm going to, so before any tests here, um, I'm going to want to set up a social service. Um, variable <clears throat> and so um, the so first I want to test to be able to set status so I'm basically going to say sir I would like to be able to call uh, service dot set status um, new social status and make that a variable actually um, and what would I like? I'd like to be able to say uh, set user um, a particular user And status dot set status. Um, I am building a module. Okay, and so having done that, I guess I would like to be able to. Well, so since um, I'm just going to be doing a quick contrived example here, I'm going to actually save. I'm not going to create a domain object for this properly, and I'm just going to save this to my user preferences or user properties. So I guess what I would like to say at this point is, um, ma so I'm going to be using maquito dot um, validate, or rather maquito dot verify that um, so before I can do this I realize I'm going to actually need here I'm going to need a mock user service um, that I can use so I will also have here a user service um, I need So I will mock user service, and I think I will say, um, assume that I can say social service impl dot set user service user service because indeed um, that service is going to need uh, my service is going to need access to user service. So what I'm going to want to do basically is verify that um, user service dot save user was called with myself as one argument and I'm going to say and null as the second argument because we're not changing the password 
So ultimately, um, in reality, I should check also the value of myself, but um, for this, uh, since I want to get to the user interface, I'm not going to do that just yet. So now the first step here, um, I want to make sure that this thing compiles. So I'm going to go to this social, that th this test compiles. So I'm going to go to the, um, on social status, I'm going to create a set user, a setter. Um, I actually realize this extends base open MRS object, which I don't want for this example. So I'm, um, if I can leave, well, no, which I don't need for this example. So it doesn't actually have an ID. Remove that no longer relevant. Java.comment. All right. So um, this will have a user property, and I'm gonna, I'll also have a status property. Um, and let's say, well, that's good enough. And I will generate the getters and setters status, and I'll also have the getter for a user to go with this. All right. Switching back, um, the only thing I, I need to do now is I would like to be able to, I need the set status method on um, social service and user service, or rather the service impl needs, oops, let's say I need a setter um, on social service impl. All right, so at this point, um, uh, and this class doesn't compile yet, I need to implement the set status method. I'll leave it blank for the moment. So to, just to verify, if I run this unit test, um, I just want to verify that this fails. Obviously it will, because I haven't done anything. Okay. Um, actually, done, I, well, it's not failing for the right reason, so, um, I did, right, I made this call wrong, I should be saying verify user service dot save user, I got the parentheses wrong on that, so, running the test again, okay, it correctly fails, basically, um, user service dot save user was not invoked. All right, now I'm ready to actually implement the logic that will make this test pass. So let's go to our implementation of uh, social service dot set status. Um, and you know, actually, while I'm looking at this, um, I'm gonna. I'd like to rename this method to uh, post status or post status update or something like that. All right. So what I would like to do is basically, so status has a user. And basically what I'm uh, going to want to do is user dot um, set user property. Um, and I'm going to want a constant, but um, let's say social dot status and the value should be the status from that input object and I'm going to want to make this a constant um, which I'll call user property social status um, which okay is defined up here all right, uh, and then finally, I will call user service dot save user user null. Um, I'm not changing the password. So now, switch back to the test, run it again, and it passes. All right, and let's say that the other method I'm going to need is 
should get status updates. So I'm going to want to be able to say um, service.get status updates. Um, and I'm going to want this to give me back a list of social status objects. Um, and let's say um, I'm going to want to say when uh, rather so what I would like to verify basically I, I need to set up condition and I want to say that um, cert that statuses dot well size is oops is is two for example I still have to set up the condition that will actually make this work um, and so to actually set up that condition let's say um, I will so this is a little bit bad style I'm gonna use the other well I'm gonna use that other method here and trust that it's working but I think that's okay in this case in real life I would um, actually be using a real domain object so I will say uh, new user um, one and user two and finally I'll have three and let's say that um, service dot post status update um, new social status for user one they say uh, watching TV and let's say that three is uh, doing homework. All right. And so in order to really uh, to get this test to, presumably the way to get this test to work, um, I'm also going to need to say when and on my mock. So when user service dot uh, get all users say then return um, one two three in a list um, all right so now I need to make this compile so I need a constructor for social status that takes a user and a status and I now and I also need to add the placeholder for get status updates in the service and then social service impl um, I need to implement that method. All right, so I should run this test. It should fail. Um, uh, apparently, all right, I broke the other test by getting rid of the no arg constructor, so I will put that back and run my more recent test again well run both of them again null pointer exception should get status updates well that's fine actually um, I guess I could say assert not null statuses um, okay so now 
if I run this test again, I will correctly be failing on an assertion. Um, all right, so now let's just implement this method um, to get status updates. So let's say I'm going to call user service dot get all users. I'm going to iterate over that. Um, I want to be able to have an array that I can fill up with um, results here. So if user, well, let's say rather user dot get user property user property social status um, uh, and basically if status is not null then I would like to create a new social status um, I would like with um, user and status And I will add that to um, my return array. Um, what's the, why is that not compiling? Um, whoops, I did not mean to return an array of social services, but rather I would like to change the return type to be a list of social status. All right. So switching back to the test, I should be able to run this and hopefully it passes. Um, I actually got three things here. I wonder what's up with that. Um, the quick test here is I'm going to put a breakpoint um, in the method where I'm actually adding things and I will debug the test that I just ran. Um, so at this point, okay, the first time through someone is watching TV, which is fine, we expect that. The next time through I see that I assumed that this would be returning null, but actually if you don't have a particular user property set, it seems to return the empty string. So that's why things are failing. Um, so I'll go back and say instead of status is not null, I will say if string utils dot is not um, empty, say status, then I'll do the return. I don't need that breakpoint anymore. I can switch back to the test, run it. And it passes. All right. So our API is built. It's got um, we've got a domain object, a fake one, not one that's persistent to the, to the database at least, but um, we've got something we'll use to represent a social status, and we've got an API to create those, create those statuses, and get them back. All right. Now that we have the API set up. We're going to go through the steps listed in the wiki page using the UI framework in your module. So the first thing that we need to do um, is to add the Maven dependency on the UI framework module, which we've already done, um, just based on the Maven module archetype. We also need to mark um, that our module requires the UI framework module, which is also done by the Maven archetype. So those steps are done already. Next, we need to add a bean definition in our web module application context. You can get more details about exactly what this is doing if you want, but um, trust that it is a uh, completely common standard thing that you need to do exactly the same way 99% of the time. Basically, this sets up the standard module UI configuration um, for, and I need to put my module ID here, social. 
Finally, um, and it's important that I do this before I load the module, um, I'm going to create folders under OMOD source main web app called pages fragments and um, resources. Alright, so now that I've um, sort of set up the web module application context bean, uh, the other thing I need to do is set up my um, run configuration so that I can do rapid application development on the UI or on this module, on this social module that I'm building now. The UI framework has support for automatically re recompiling controllers and reloading views, um, but to do this you need to point it, uh, and it does this only in development mode, not in production, so you need to set it up by telling it where uh, where that base folder is. So I'm, I'm going to my run edit configuration in IntelliJ or run edit run configurations under Eclipse and um, basically on the on the run configuration I have set up to do Jetty run on the OpenMRS core I go into the VM arguments and I've, I've actually set this up already but um, I need to basically say dash d ui framework dot development dot social that's the module id here <coughs> equals and then i need to give it the full path to the root folder of that module so it knows where to reload where to watch for class changes and where to reload them from all right so i've actually already got this uh, open mrs running um, which you can see here, and I've already loaded up the UI framework and UI library modules. So I'm now going to add this module that I've just built, Social 1.0 Snapshot. Actually, sorry, I realize that is sitting around from before. Um, I need to run, I need to actually build the module first. Um, you'll notice the reason that um, OMOD file was there already is I previously tried to record this segment and ran into a problem where I had not created these fragments, pages, and resources folders before loading up the module for the first time and ran into some trouble. So um, you'll notice one thing I have not done yet is created any actual pages. Um, so that's okay. There's nothing here yet. Um, but as long as these empty folders exist, I'm actually going to load this module up now and start doing the development directly while um, while it's while the web app is running. All right. So the module is loaded, and so what I would like to do is basically you know, with the idea that's in this little bit of mock-up, I want to have a page that shows status updates. So let's say what I'm going to do as a placeholder is in the pages folder under web app, I'm going to create a file called um, statuses.gsp. So GSP Strictly speaking, it's supposed to be um, is something defined by Grails as Groovy Server Pages. This is not actually a true Grails GSP. Um, it is, however, it is uh, something that the UI framework provides that is a Groovy Groovy template. So basically, you're allowed to write text, and you're allowed to put in scriptlets of Groovy, and um, so. I think you'll come to like that quite a bit, but for the moment, I'm just going to say, hello, this is a test. Um, so I've saved this in statuses.gsp, and now, um, in without needing to reload the module, 
I'm going to go to the URL. So I happen to be, my web app's name is social. So that is slightly confusing, but I'm going to say under there, go to social, which is the module ID, statuses.page. Um, and so that basically by convention is going to look for the page called statuses. And it finds, hello, this is a test. You'll notice I have not recompiled and reloaded the module. This was um, purely based on um, based on automatically reloading the class in development mode, or sorry, automatically reload, reloading the view in development mode. So let's say, all right, so that, that was just making sure that things are configured correctly. So the next thing I need to do is underneath, uh, in my modules, um, uh, base, well, underneath the regular package, I'm going to add another package called page.controller. Um, and I'm going to create a class in here called statuses page controller. Um, so you'll notice that I, and I'm not going, and I'm going to add a method here, say public void get. Um, and so this is the class, uh, this is the, the controller and method that's going to handle a get request to the statuses page. And this is purely done by convention, not by explicitly defining a request mapping anywhere like you would have to do in Spring MVC. So, all right. So let's say now um, that here I would like, in the get method here, I would like to get all status updates. Um, and calling the API method I'd written to do that. So if I want access to the, um, to what's it called, to the, to the service from, from this um, module, I'm going to say spring bean annotation, um, which basically has the effect of auto wiring this or injecting it, injecting a, a spring bean. Um, and I want the spring bean whose class, I guess, is called, well, whose class is uh, whoops, social service. And I also would like, what I would like to do is populate a page model object by basically, uh, which will then be passed to the view. So um, the, you're allowed to do flexible method signatures in the UI framework, very similar to the ones in um, the, in Spring MVC. Um, in the documentation for the UI framework on the wiki, um, there's a reference here on flexible method signatures for controllers and action methods, and you can see a list of the different possible types um, that you can use in a page controller. Um, so going back, um, let's say, so what I would like to basically do is say service dot get status updates, um, and put that, I'm going to put that in the page model. Whoops, page model dot put <laughs> status updates. All right, so now I'm going to go back to my statuses page. Um, instead of saying, hello, this is a test, I'm going to say, there are, and then I'm going to say status updates dot size, status updates, just as a placeholder. Um, so this is a groovy template, and you can read up about that on you can get, well, you can read a lot about Groovy templates on the web, but you can also, um, in this, from the UI framework documentation, there is a uh, tutorial, UI framework step-by-step -step tutorial. Um, it's slightly outdated in some things, but the intro to Groovy describes 
describes a little bit about how you can use scriptlets, how you can use variable interpolation, and things like that. So, um, going back here, this here is going to basically interpolate the value of, well, status updates dot size. Um, and what's in here can be any groovy code, um, which effectively means any Java code or uh, other or other things that Groovy makes easier. So let me try now. Um, so if I was in Eclipse, I could go directly to my um, to the browser and reload this page, and I would get and things would work out. Um, since this is IntelliJ and it doesn't do compilation in the same way Eclipse does, I actually need to go to this statuses page controller and I need to compile it. Um, Command Shift F9 on the map or on the Mac. So I've now compiled this. Uh, basically, what needs to happen is that the dot class file needs to end up in the target folder for the module. Eclipse does that compilation automatically, and IntelliJ doesn't. So now back here, I can reload this page. Ah, and I get the error that no unique bean of type social service is defined. Um, interesting. I would have assumed that uh, the way our um, module application context was set up would define that bean. Um, but I guess actually, and I should follow a, well, a feature request for this, um, since there is no top level bean, but rather the bean for the service is actually defined inside inside here there's no top level bean in the spring application context so I actually can't use this um, spring bean an annotation um, with the way things stand now um, so to fix that I'm now going I will actually take this bean definition pull it out and give this thing the ID of social service. Nothing else about it needs to change though. And then um, ref local equals social service. All right, um, so I'm going to now uh, recompile and redeploy my module, which you will almost never have to do um, while doing UI development in the UI framework. But um, in this case, let me reload that so that the beans are set up the way I want them. Um, so the you will notice that I mean in my code I could have just I could have done sort of the more typical OpenMRS approach of saying um, context dot get service social service but um, doing that means that if I wanted to write a unit test for this method it would actually be quite difficult because you need to end, well, a mock-based unit test is very difficult because you need to use power mock to mock the context and static methods are hard to mock and anyway, uh, using this approach means that if I wanted to write a unit test for this get method, which at the moment is very simple, I can do that without, uh, I can write a mock-based unit test without needing to do anything tricky. So I will now go back to this page, reload it. So now I got a null pointer exception. Um, social service impl 68. Interesting. Um, ah. Uh, once again, I forgot one other little thing, which is that I need this. Um, I need user service to be auto-wired, and just to be sure, I'm going to put a qualifier or annotation on it to make sure it's the right one. 
All right, so once again, I will recompile and redeploy. Um, and I suppose I could have done a context sensitive test for this to make sure that um, things were actually wired up in the live web app as well instead of just doing the mock based test, but next time. Alright, um, I've reloaded, I will go back a few pages and reload. Alright, it says there are zero status updates, which is what I expect because I haven't actually posted anything yet. Alright, so um, let's do a couple of things. So let's start off by um, introducing the form that's going to let me, well, that's going to actually let me post my update. So um, back to con the controller here. Um, I'm going to, as a first pass, put in a get method um, that's going to return. Um, well, it's going it's going to return a string because I need to. I want to basically reload the current page um, to get that. Well, actually, I can just return null in that case. So, um, so I'm going to return a string and I also need to use a few request parameters. Um, same annotation as in Spring. So let's say I want the user request parameter should be a user. Um, and the UI framework defines a bunch of converters which will automatically convert strings to standard OpenMRS types. So I want that and I want a request param for status which is string status. So what I want to basically do is say new um, social status user status this whole thing and then uh, make that a variable, and I'm going to say service dot post status update with that. Um, and finally, I will return null. So actually, I don't strictly need to. Well, no. So returning null, sorry, would actually uh, return the same view as this page, but I don't want to do that. I actually want to to re do a. Uh, client-side redirect after the post. So I'm going to add one more um, parameter here, UI utils, which is um, really a convenience, well, it's got a bunch of convenience functions which you can use both in controllers and in views. Um, so here I'm going to return redirect colon and then UI dot page link um, and basically, so within the social module, I want to return statuses, the, the statuses page. All right. So that sets up the, um, this is what I need on the server side to support posting a form to set my status. So um, I will oops, uh, recompile this. Um, which I've done. All right, and now I'm going to go back to the statuses page, and um, I'm going to add a form whose method is post, and it's going to go back to the same URL as the page we're on right now. Um, I'm going to have a hidden input. Um, whose name is user, whose value is, um, I'm going to say context.authbit, or rather, a groovy scriptlet, context.authenticatedUser. Um, so 
there are a few variables available to you by default in a page model or in, in a page view, and I believe these are documented um, in the UI framework documentation. Um, oh, actually, sorry, I thought that those were documented here, but they're not. Um, so, well, apologies for that. But in any case, um, one there's a variable called context, which basically gives me access to the regular OpenMRS uh, context, where we usually call static methods. Um, in this case, uh, this uh, dot authenticated user is Groovy shorthand for call the method get authenticated user. So, so I've now got a hidden input uh, giving me the current user. Actually, I want to get their user ID. All right, and then I'm going to put in a um, text area. Rows equals two, columns equals sixty, and um, let's say a line break, and then an input type equals submit to post this. All right, so go back here, I reload this page, all right, there's still zero status updates, but now if I say Obama won the election, and I hit post, whoops, I got an exception, so cannot find controller method, um, did I correctly recompile this? Um, so I've got a get method, and Oh, whoops, yeah. Sorry, I forgot to rename this method. So I have a get method and a post method. The get will handle the get, and post will obviously handle the post. So now I reload, or I recompile that file. Again, in Eclipse, you don't have to do that. Um, let's redo this post. Missing required parameter exception. It's interesting. So. Um, this is something there, it's a limitation of the UI framework that it doesn't currently um, tell you what the missing required parameter is, but in this case, um, let's see, I had said, so let me uh, use um, Chrome developer tools to see what the post that actually happened was, and um, the form data was user1, but I think I didn't, oh, right, so I, going back here to my GSP page, um, I put it in a text area, but I never gave it a name. All right, that was silly. Um, so I will reload this page, and Obama still won the election. Hit post. All right, there's now a status update, so looks like that seems to have worked correctly. Um, I haven't, well, I'm not actually displaying it, so let's say I would like to display that. So um, let's just fun wrap. I'm going to put a field set up here and um, that'll have a legend saying, you know, my status and then I'll have another field set um, whose legend is um, status other well status updates and rather than my status let's say post my status um, all right so what I would like to do now and here's the first time I'm using a groovy scriptlet rather than just variable interpolation. I'm going to say status updates dot each and for each status update um, so this is uh, Groovy's way of doing um, well this is Groovy's shorthand way of iterating over a collection um, 
it uh, basically will run the thing in curly braces here is strictly a closure and it's going to be called with a variable called it unless I choose to give that a different name so let's say um, I will say status update dash, uh, well basically an arrow. So this is Groovy syntax if I want to give the name of the variable that I have access, that I'm iterating over basically within um, this within this closure. Um, you can find out more about this by looking up Groovy uh, anywhere on the web. But um, let's say I could also if I wanted use Java syntax for a for loop but I like this a little more so um, I could say uh, you and so I'm also I'm gonna use the UI um, which is a UI utils uh, class which you saw us use in the controller and has some convenience methods so I'm going to say UI dot format um, status update dot user so it'll basically do the standard formatting for for that user um, says and then I'm going to say um, status update dot status all right so just as place so just quickly let's see what that looks like um, load this page again all right so I've got the status update is being displayed here um, and I don't have any other status updates because I don't have any other users um, but I will well maybe for testing later I could do that if I wanted um, now let's show another thing I could do so um, I've currently set it up so that I'm going to display, you know, I, I've put the code to display a status update directly in line here. But let's say that I really would like to be able to dis uh, include these status updates on other pages elsewhere. So instead, I'm going to move this, move this into a fragment, which is something that the UI framework supports, basically to make it much easier to compose pages out of reusable pieces. So um, I'm going to say instead of this, I'm basically going to say ui.include fragment. Um, and so I'm going to include a fragment from the social module. Um, I'm going to include the fragment called status update. And I'm going to, and this here is the syntax for defining a map inline in Groovy, um, I'm going to uh, pass, uh, put in there the configuration for this fragment will include basically a variable called status update and its value will be that same status update. Um, Alright, and so um, so basically, uh, this is going. This is the method call to include a fragment and interpol And because I put it in a dollar curly brace block, it's going to interpolate the value of running this method call. So um, now you'll notice I created this fragments folder before. So in this fragments folder, I'm going to create a file called status update.gsp um, and in here I'm going to put what I had had before so one thing um, the um, this map here the configuration that I pass into a fragment is available within the fragment as uh, the variable called config so I'm going so here I'm going to change this and actually say config.statusupdate.user and here config .statusupdate.status. All right, go back here, refresh the page. It looks exactly the same because I haven't changed anything, or rather 
I'll, I moved this out into a fragment, but it doesn't um, look any different because, well, obviously the code is doing the same thing. So let's say I wanted to, you know, uh, say I actually wanted to say I'm going to have a div here um, whose class is status update um, and um, within that div I'm going to have another div for um, uh, well, well the class for this will be um, user say and then and then I'll have a class um, for the status so let's say basically I would like to um, apply some CSS to this so I could do something like the following um, and I could say um, dot status update has border 1px black solid and background color is light blue um, and I could say um, dot status update dot status um, is let's say font size 1.5 ems right so I could do you know I reload the page and I see that um, I see the, that CSS being applied however you'll notice the idea here is that I may be including this fragment many many times. Um, let's say you know I had 20 other users and they've all posted their social statuses so I don't actually want to um, and I don't really want this style defined in line so in the resources folder here I'm going to create another file um, called styles Oops, uh, I'm not sure I like how IntelliJ just did that. I'm going to undo that. And, um, can I just create a new folder? No. Um, I'm going to try a different view just so I'm sure I'm getting the right thing here. Hmm. No, actually, that view doesn't help me out either. Um, just to, just so it's clear, I'm pretty sure that IntelliJ was going to do the right thing here, but um, what I'm expecting to have is underneath web app, there should be a um, folder called resources. Well, uh, I'm, okay, I'm just going to go back to the default view and hope that things are working as expected. All right, so I want a folder called resources, and in that folder, I'm going to create another folder called styles. Um, in styles, I'm going to create a file called statusupdates.css. Um, all right, and basically I'm going to take exactly what I had put here in this style section, remove that, put that in the CSS file, but then um, ba go back to this fragment here. I'm going to include another a Groovy scriptlet, and I'm going to say UI dot include CSS. Um, and I need to include CSS from the social module and the CSS I want to include is status updates.css so um, by convention this is going to look in the resources sty slash styles folder um, 
within, in this case, the social module. So let me just go back and reload this page, and it did, in fact, work correctly. If I use Chrome Developer Tools here, um, oops, uh, and I reload this page, um, you'll see that we both got this page and the CSS file. All right, so I can say it works. All right, so now let's do a quick bit of refactoring and show another feature of the framework. Um, looking back at the page controller, you'll see here um, that I've got I've, I've individually gotten these user and status request parameters, but what might be nicer is if I could automatically bind to a, uh, what was it called, a social status object in the first place. So indeed I can do that because I've named the parameters properly. I'm going to say, um, well, I'm going to use the bind params annotation on a social status object and um, let's just verify that this works. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to go through all of the HTTP request parameters and attempt to bind them to matching uh, fields in the social status object. Um, you know, you can also Although if I had set up the form differently, in a different way, I could have said, um, you know, doing this will look for um, all parameters that start with, I think, stat dot. Um, but that's, uh, so that's another way you can use that, but not how I need it here. So I will recompile this controller and verify that bind params should work. And it does in fact work. So um, in this particular example with only two fields, it's not really a huge deal. But um, with, if I were trying to save a much larger command object, this would be really important. So now let's finally, um, let's look at how the UI framework module makes it easy to work with a to do Ajax sorts of interactions. So this is the statuses page controller and at the moment I'm fetching all the status updates here and also handling the post here but let's say I'm gonna leave this code here for the moment but um, let's say I wanted to well Instead, um, I wanted to be able to refresh this page via Ajax without having to reload. And let's say I want to be able to post my status in the same way. So I'm going to create another Java package here. Um, well, let's see. Uh, org OpenMRS module social. Um, and within there, I want dot fragment dot controller. So in here, um, <clears throat> let's say I'm going to create a new class called um, status update fragment controller. So fragments also follow the same sort of convention based approach. Um, you'll notice we had done this status update fragment originally with just a GSP file. Both pages and fragments, they need to have, well, fragments need to have either a, a view or a controller or both. Pages need a, definitely need a view. The controller is optional. Um, but so in this case, I've now created the frag the controller that's going to go with the um, stat this status update view fragment or fragment view that we've already created. So um, 
since that view already does everything it needs to do, I'm just going to put an empty controller method here. So this is the method that gets called in this controller class when I try to, well, when I include that view as is, um, when I include that fragment as is. Um, but fragments give you another bit of functionality, which is they let you group together multiple actions, which um, often you can use to support Ajax interactions. So what I can do here is say, um, I'm going to have a public method, so any other public methods in this controller are accessible as actions and can be called um, by the browser. So I will, and so let's say I want a method called, um, a method that's going to return, I'm going to say a list of simple object, and I'll get back to what that is. Um, and I'm going to say get um, status updates. So I'm just going to look back actually at the page controller and take, um, I'm going to copy basically exactly what the logic was from there. Um, I'm going to include this, I need that social service bean, um, and I need to get Um, those updates, but now um, what I'm going to do differently here is, well, instead of adding those to a model, um, this method here is basically being called, um, it, I'm expecting that this is going to get called by Ajax, and I want to be able to return some JSON content, um, or some content that can be automatically converted to JSON. So. I'm not going to try to put that in, put this in a model or anything. I want to basically return. I would like to return this list as is, but um, the list as is includes, for example, a user object, which has you know which is a Hibernate proxy, and trying to convert convert that to JSON doesn't work nicely. So I'm going to again get the UI utils. Um, get a UI utils object uh, to be able to use and um, I can say um, return simple object dot from collection so this takes a collection and returns a collection it also takes a UI utils object and um, tells uh, as well as a list of the properties that I want to include. So um, I'm going to say so the collection, so I'm going to take this updates collection, I need a UI utils object for convenience, and let's say that I want to return, well, so basically it's going to be a list of JSON objects and or a list of simple objects, and each of those simple objects I need to make sure it includes user dot um, username, say, and um, I need it to include status. And that's that. So let me um, compile this class. And now I'm going to go back to the browser, and this time I'm going to um, I'm going to open up a new window and I'm going to go to, so under social, the web app, social, the module, um, I'm going to go to, um, under there, I'm going to status updates, that's the name of the fragment, and then get status updates dot action. All right, so um, apologies for, well, Normally I wouldn't end up typing this manually, so I go here, oh, I see, got an exception, um, if I look, I'm guessing there's a stack trace, I can see server-side, um, 
cannot find. Did I give that the right name? Status, oh, it's status update fragment controller, not status updates. So, status update, get status updates. Um, another exception. Uh, don't know what to use as a success URL. Um, so what did I do here? So, um, right. What I, uh, um, well, what I had intended to do here was take a look at the result that came back, but I realized, um, I had not, uh, I've never specified in any way that it's supposed to come back as JSON. So, um, let's see. So it's actually, well, the framework is trying to load up a page or return that content to a page. So I believe I can do something like return format equals JSON. Indeed. Um, so, um, and what you can see here is, so I've got a list in JSON, a list of objects, um, user, and that's a complex object that shows a username. And I realized that the, um, admin user actually doesn't have a username, so let's, uh, so we can fix that, but, and then the status that gets returned is the one we expect. So, um, let's say in addition to user.username, I want to include here user.person.personName. Save that, compile it, reload this. So um, you'll see here I got person, well if I actually think of this as an object, there's an object that has user dot person dot person name is the string super user. Um, you may be wondering how does this sort of uh, simple object thing work. Basically the idea is that, and this is why we pass in a UI utils object for it to use while doing this simplification, um, it knows basically, so I had told it I wanted to include user.person.person name. Now this um, property is a, well its type is person name um, and basically the UI framework knows how to take a person name and turn it into a string. And that's based on, I, think I can load this up, uh, person name to string. Uh, I guess it's not called that, but um, there's a formatter, well, there's a formatter class in the UI framework module that handles that. Um, and it's something at the moment you cannot override the formatting, but um, someday we'll add that feature. All right, so now I've got a method to get status updates, and um, let's say I also want a method uh, to post status update, and this um, the same way. So I'm going to want the same parameters, I think, but I'm also going to want a bind params annotated um, status update or social status. Um, exactly the same way as I did in the post method in the page controller. And so here we did the same thing, sort of we can say service dot uh, post status update status and ultimately what I want to return is simple object dot from object in this case because I just want to return one object not a collection um, from object uh, the object I want to convert is status it needs the UI helper and the same user dot username user dot person dot person name and status. So um, in theory 
if I go here and instead of get status updates action, I were to go to post status update, and I were to give it a user equals one and status equals um, hello. So what happened there? I got back a, I got an exception, and that exception was um, post status update. So what was that post status update? Um, I, I think I must have just forgotten to recompile um, in IntelliJ. I'm still a little bit used to Eclipse, so let me try hitting that again. Indeed, so that um, actually, well, it should have made the change, um, and it should have returned this same, well, and it returned the object representing that status I posted. If I go back here and I reload this page, you'll note that the status has in fact changed to hello, as I expected. So, um, I'm going to stop here at this point, and um, we'll, I guess, pick up again in a later episode of OpenMRS University. Um, if you've got any questions, um, look for me on the OpenMRS developers mailing list or the IRC channel, and I look forward to getting other people using the UI framework.